Somebody they trying to kill me, but y'all need to pray with me. Yeah, it's, a, it's a struggle. I often tell folk every Sunday to make it to the pulpit. And this day I finally get my strength. So we thank God. Good to see Sister Bridges and Sister Lavashka with us today. Uh, last week, uh, I did a sermon at 11.30 hour. And, and they said I should bring it to this hour. <laughs> but I won't, I won't do that. I won't, I won't do that. Uh, it's giving me, but I'd give, you, I'd give you a verse and I'd give you a text. It says something about wives be submissive to your own husbands. <laughs> I figured I wouldn't get too many amens on that. It's real. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. <laughs> Ezekiel 37 and verse 11. God bless you, Brother Pat. You got something for Brother? Uh, Ezekiel 37 and 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Amen. Amen. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And the bones say we dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. Oh, ye dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, am I the only person in here that ever has a better time in your life when you just didn't care anymore? <laughs> what happened? Did you, did you lose your enthusiasm? Did somebody zap your zeal? That there are times when even the strongest of us would throw up our hands and defeat. There are times when it looks like victory just won't happen. And at such times, we are likely, we are inclined to wave the right flag of surrender, throw up our hands and lose hope. Yes, like, a, like a helium-filled balloon that gradually loses air, a person who once floated on the high of inspiration and motivation, uh, they can gradually descend to an untimely landing. In the workplace, in schools, in our homes, even in the church. Uh, there, there are millions who seem to have lost their will to go for. Or pursue a course they once felt driven to follow. And for all practical purposes, they're dead to the causes they once held dear. Even in our society, is beginning to reflect some deadly symptoms. There, there appears to be uh, a decline in godly inspired family values and morality in general. Those truths we once held dear have degenerated for the most part into a built shell of what it once was. How dead is our society? Uh, even a casual review shows a culture that has distanced itself from what we once believed to be true. We know our society is declining when you have mass shooting after mass shooting. Oh my God. We, we, we know our society is declining when you see some of the most beautiful girls becoming lovers of other girls. Some of the most handsome men are holding hands with other men. I said we know our society is declining because we talk about Black Lives Matter, but it matters to everybody but a black person. We, we, we know, we know, we know our society is declining because parents are frustrated over the failure of their children to, to even make it in school, and so they give up hope. 
Marriage partners struggling in unresponsive relationship often dismiss their union as beyond repair and divorce. Schools completely dismiss some students as beyond hope and expel them. Society writes off the same children and lock them away in, we don't call them jails no more, they call them detention centers. And they lock them up for the rest of their lives. Educators even feel frustrated when their best efforts to revive test scores and student performance still fall short. Right. <clears throat> and whenever a person or a society as a whole loses hope, it loses the breath that keeps them living, and they diminish to a state similar to that of dry bones. They are lifeless. Their, their, their daily activity is minimized to simply get through another day. No zeal, no enthusiasm, no motivation. They're just trying to get through another day. Is there hope? It, 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 is it beyond safe? I mean, if a person reaches to such an all-time low, can he or she be revived? Can he or she be motivated to rise up and live again? Is there any hope for our children? I, I'm convinced that the Word of God provides the answer. I said I'm convinced that the Word of God provides all the answers to life's dilemmas, including our feeling of hopelessness. I know that when you hear a word from the Lord and you act on it, His word, amen, will give you the strength that you need. This text uh, focuses on Ezekiel. And he's given a message of hope to the people of Israel. Now this text is best understood uh, in the context of this historic background. Uh, this text was written during a period uh, when Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar had invaded Judah the second time. And uh, he took the youngest, the brightest, the most talented men, and went back to Babylon. And among the 10,000 prominent leaders, soldiers, craftsmen, and scholars, here was Ezekiel. Right now, he's around 25 years old, trying to be a priest. And Ezekiel settled in his own house along the river Shabal in Babylon. And he prophesied there for at least 22 years. Not only were the Israelites reduced to second class existence in a foreign land, but they felt utterly isolated, utterly cut off from God. They, they were cut off. They had been given their ancestors of land. They had a land that was flowing with milk and honey. And, and here they are, devastated. They've been torn away from it. The temple has been destroyed. It's vast well removed and carelessly hauled off into distant lands. And so the people of Israel felt lost. They felt forsaken. A little desperate. Matter of fact, in their own words, they said, our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. And we are cut off completely. Even the young men, like those in Ezekiel age bracket, they lost hope. They gave up trying. And then God gave Ezekiel another of several visions, of which two have become well known. Yeah, the wheel in the middle of the wheel and the vision of the dry bones in the valley. And this vision depicted the people of Israel who had been scattered into different lands. The spirit of national unity had reached an all-time low. Their people were in Assyria, Judea, Babylon. They, they gave up hope of ever seeing their homeland again. For many, that feeling of hopelessness translated into a feeling of personal defeat. Known for being a people of great enthusiasm and inspiration. Bible readers remember when they hung their hawks on the willow trees. They asked the question, how can we sing Zion song in a strange land? Are y'all praying with me? Ezekiel vision portrayed a people completely restored 
fully alive and living for God. Once they decided to hear and abide by the word of God. I don't know if you noticed or not, but there are many of us who face dry bones on a daily basis. They, they, they face seemingly hopeless scenarios that frustrate them immensely. How do you deal with these dry bones? Yeah, we got dry bones in our school. Teachers talk about their anxiety and the lack of motivation.